How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming, and this is Life in the Kingdom, the devlog for the brand new iteration number three. I burned the project to the ground and uh, restarted it in Godot 4.2 and got rid of the SQL plugin, ripped out the SQL database, and now we're using Godot resources only. And it's lightning fast, it's much better, and it's, it's worth the remake. I've uh, been messing around with some shaders now. You can see I've got this shader on the little underline to let you know that these hotkeys work. These are all bound to the hotkeys now that they're underlining. There's another little shader on the Discord icon here. You can see that it's just kind of uh, <laughs> doing its thing. Anyway, uh, this is the game now. It's a roguelite type of game. Um, you start at 18, you're going to go to 75 years of age, and then at 75 you get the options to... Uh, retire your character or risk, you know, keep playing him and then he perma dies. And if you perma dies, you don't get quite as good of a bonus into the world as you would if you just retired the person, him or her. Uh, so there's going to be some mechanics where, like, uh, whatever you do in your game, it's going to benefit the the next playthrough. So you're going to have more shops open. They're going to sell higher quality goods. Um, There'll be more towns, more things available, more trainers to train your characters. So your first playthrough might be mostly doing like ch fighting off monsters in the forest and chopping trees down and maybe start building some houses. And you might you might be 75 before you know it, before you get all these houses built. And then people start moving into the kingdom and uh, there's um, a king who's offering. If I press F, you get to name your character. Mm -hmm. If I say Drifty, well, it's already taken. He's not going to let me have that name. So you have to pick something else. Let's pick T. There we go. So if we name ourselves T, you see that it changed to T here. And the king is like, well, met T. Suppose we should start by clearing the forest of foul beasts and monstrous entities. And uh, the king wants to stay here and guard the camp. And I, I guess I should put that in quotes. And we're supposed to go around and kill the, the enemies. And after we do that, he's going to have us chop some trees and whatnot. And, and that's basically that. Uh, the UI is different now. Uh, it's it's going to have this pixel art graphic style for the gameplay and the main window. And it's going to have like a chat log for the dialogue. And I'm going to have things pop up in here. I've got particle effects. You can already see some of them going on. Like this chat bubble is actually a particle effect. There's a particle effect coming off every five seconds. Uh, eight hours passes in the game. And that is the sign of... That's when you see the little plus... Those little heart regener or plus symbol regenerations. Uh, symbols that you get some HP back, some energy back, and some stamina back, and it progresses the time. If you hover over this little bar down here, you can see your age, and uh, you can see that every time the animation plays, you get eight hours older. So we're at 12 days, eight hours, and then we're at 12 days and 16 hours. You'll see five seconds tick by, we get the thing, and bada boom, now we're 13 days and 18 years old, and time ticks, but um. It'll take you like 75 hours ish to like go to level to be 75 years old in the game. Uh, conveniently, that's how it worked. Uh, it's like 76 hours and some minutes. But anyway, like that's like, I'm not expecting a player to play the the character for 76 hours. That's just going to be if all they did was stand around, it would take them 76 and a half hours to die of old age essentially. But if they go do stuff, uh, the player is going to trade their time. Uh, their character's time, this this resource here, which is a number around 40 million, and uh, the bottom is like 9.4 million. So you get like 30 million of a, of a resource to spend on things. It's always ticking down slowly, and you spend it in bigger chunks to, to accomplish things. If you want to build a, a housing unit, then that's going to take, you know, maybe a few weeks of your time and a certain X amount of resources. And then the, it all... I definitely want to convenience the player's time as much as possible. I want to respect the player's time and convince the player. So like for the player, they're just going to click the button. I agree. Yes. I want to spend these resources, confirm boom, three weeks goes by and the houses are built and things have moved forward. If the player receives an income, then they're going to get all of the income they would receive. The player does receive income. That's something, I guess that's a good segue to talk about the menu here. Um, Every second, the player receives a copper coin as income from the king, and doing things will increase your income. And uh, anyway, you're going to work for the king and rebuild his his uh, kingdom for him. But there's some twists that I don't want to reveal in the story, and, and I'm still figuring it out, honestly. So we'll leave it at that. I've added a bunch of items 
Um, in the database for SQL, I have hundreds, but I've, took it, I've taken that all out. So now we're using uh, uh, Goodell resources, which means I have to go back in with, you know, on one screen, I have a DB viewer and I'm taking, I'm, co I'm copy pasting, uh, you know, assets from one field to another field uh, over and over and over and over for hours and hours. And I need to do more of that uh, in order to just transfer the database of items that I have uh, from SQL to the Godot resources. But I'll just scroll through uh, some of the ones you see here. This is the tab menu. If I press in I for inventory or if I press tab, it brings this up and you'll have like a main menu bar here. Um, I plan to have it so that if I press escape, it'll darken the screen and have like a uh, another options and uh, two title, save game, load game, you know, that will pause the game. I'm still working on like a global pause of all of the processes. Um, I know how to do it. I just have to like get it all organized to work right. So I'm going to work on that soon. But anyway, you know, if I can scroll through these items, you can see that uh, some of them are consumable and some of them are not consumable. And uh, I'm still, um, I haven't got all that set up yet. Like I do, they, they do have stats like this tomato will restore a set number of HP and MP. And uh, I do have a class for consumable, but I have to figure out how I want to handle the right clicking. Because originally, um, the tutorial I watched to, that uh, sh showed me how to do this inventory grid system had right clicking set to use items. And uh, I, although I followed the tutorial and had that set up, I removed it because I want right click to have a context wind window. So I've changed everything. Uh, when I restarted the project, I put in some of the tutorials that I was watching as like a template and I followed them and, and then uh, started building up on, uh, upon that and started bringing in things from iteration two, um, which you've seen from the last video and, and ideas from that back into here. But basically everything has been recreated from scratch when, um, when you talk about like all of the menus and everything. And, and speaking of that, I don't even have all of them in yet. I'm still making them. Uh, I've only been working in iteration three for a short while now. Uh, but I do plan to have, so when I press C, you can, uh, on the right hand side, we'll have like a, a, a character stats menu pop up and it'll show like accuracy and evasion and defense and uh, all the specific extra damage to this, extra damage to that and, and all the uh, all the stats like I've done before in duration two, something similar, but like maybe more compact and, uh, and, and like maybe a little more sleek. Uh, but anyway... That's basically it. That's where the project is. I, I want to show one more thing real quick. If uh, I go ahead and show the other scene that I was working on, I, I do have collisions and areas set up. Uh, I, as you see, when I pressed F next to the king, he it was interacting. That was using an area. But um, I also have like some of these bullet mechanics set up right here. So if you get hit, uh, you can see that the player is taking damage over here. We are regenerating um, over time because our regen and time is advancing not all of these bullets will um, damage you. Like the green one slows you down and the purple one here stuns you. And that's a sorcery effect. And then the mysticism slows you down. And this is just a physical sword attack bullet. And you can tell by the particle effect when it hits the player what type of effect it is. And I also have a uh, little dialogue pop-up right here. I plan to I, I plan to move these pop-ups that are showing up right here onto the player and make some sort of, uh, I guess, use an animation player or something to when I spawn the label to have it kind of just jump out and fall down. So it's, it, it'll be like minus two health, boom, boom, boom off the player. Not over here. This is just like just starting it out. But anyway, that I don't want to ramble too much longer. That's basically it. You guys have seen uh, where iteration three is at and uh, it is, it's definitely going to have better gameplay than uh, previous iterations and ideas of the game, but a long way to go. Progress is being made and I'm really happy about it. So uh, like the video, if you do like it, let me know what type of features you would like to see. Do you like my game idea? Do you like the premise? Do you not like it? How could I improve it? I'm open to your feedback in the comments below. Also join us on the discord. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video. If you do subscribe, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.